Welcome to Assembly Calendar. I'm Ted Flint. With us today, Assemblyman Al Graff, who serves the 5th Assembly District, which includes Suffolk <coughs> County. Assemblyman Graff, nice to see you. Thanks for having me here. Well, we're in the middle of the budget <coughs> season, beginning of March, and uh, this is usually th the busiest time, some of the busiest time of the, uh, of the year at the legislature. It's also silly season. That's, That's what they the, call it. Yes, yeah. and the governor, he, he, he's helping us out right there. I don't know if you heard about the new thing he has with SUNY Attica. <laughs> where he wants to actually pay uh, college tuition for prisoners. Mm -hmm. And a lot of parents are up in arms about this because, you know, a lot of parents save their money to send their kids to school, and or you have kids working three or four jobs trying to pay their way through college, and he, he wants to reward bad behavior or criminal behavior, and I guess he wants to make them all chemists and cut out the middlemen, <laughs> you know? So... Uh, you know, we have SUNY Attica, we have uh, SUNY Dannemora, and a couple other prisons out State there. State Penn. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, sometimes I don't know where this governor's going, but if you look at it, what you know, I tell people, what do you expect? You have a governor that grew up with privilege. He never broke a sweat. He never got his hands dirty, right? And he thinks this is an acceptable way to spend other people's money. But I think he's going to get a lot of pushback on it. The other thing he's getting pushed back on is Common Core, because we've been fighting this battle now. The minority in the assembly, myself more specifically, we picked up this on the Common Core. I put in a bill to repeal Common Core, and it actually focused everyone, and it focused everyone to start uniting throughout the state. And the governor wound up with 22,000 letters. So now what happened is that bill served its purpose. Now we're moving on to a new bill that actually puts the brakes on Common Core. If you're not familiar with Common Core, all right, what it is is the federal government put out an outline, and we put in for money to get from the federal government. And what happened is New York State filled in that outline. And when they filled that outline in, that's what Common Core is for New York State. And like everything else the state did, they screwed that up. If you look at Engage New York, that's the website for the ELAs on what they expect these children to do. If you read through it, I know people that teach college math, and they're looking at the math problems and going, I don't even understand what they want. The other thing they have is they ask children in first grade, find ancient Mesopotamia on a map or a globe and discuss the contributions that ancient Mesopotamia has made on modern-day civilization. There's six, okay? Mm. They don't have anything for kids with disabilities. So if a kid has a learning disability, they're, they're ignoring their individualized education plans, yeah. which by law they have to follow, but they're ignoring it. We were out there for five months listening to parents, listening to teachers, listening to grandparents, and actually students were coming up. And the anguish, the despair, right? And what's happening to these, these children because of this educational experiment that they're trying to put them through is, is devastating. I mean, we heard things about kids wetting their pants in class. We heard a, one child that stabbed himself with a pencil, right? They had a kid, kids with spe, you know, special ed, and they're sitting there taking 90-minute tests, okay? And it's just... But the biggest mm -hmm. problem is, too, is if you look at the commissioner of education, he'll come out there and he'll say, we have to do a better job communicating. Their problem isn't communicating. People are just not buying what they're selling. Their problem is, is they're not listening. All right? And that's the biggest thing when you get in government up here. Yeah. The representatives don't listen. Right now, the bill that we have, uh, it's under Ed Ra name and the, the number of the bill is um, A8844 and as a Senate sponsor with um, Senator Ball and Senator Zeldin and it's S6604 and what it actually does is puts the brakes on Common Core. Then it puts people in the room on a panel to actually look at this. Teachers, so there's three teachers. One has to be a special ed teacher. All right. Another one has to be a teacher that does English as a second language. You look at school psychologists, because this has an emotional and a psychological impact. We have a school psychologist appointed on there, and they have to have actual clinical experience. 
You go through school administrators. They're the ones that have to administer this, you know, the budget and everything else. Mm -hmm. So we take a 23 people and put them on a panel to make them actually put this under the microscope. If you look at it, it should be called uneven, uncommon core, because what they're saying is we want all our students learning the same thing at the same time. It's not happening. Mm -hmm. Some school districts actually wrote their own curriculum. Okay, they brought their teachers in, they paid their teachers over the summer, and the teachers basically wrote the curriculum. Other school districts are using the ELAs that the state put up. Now, what are the ELAs? The ELAs are basically their modules, the state's modules for education. They're scripts, okay? And these are the, these are the um, lessons that they're supposed to learn. And let me tell you something, if you look at the ELAs, there's grammatical errors, there's spelling errors. They'll tell the child to count the shaded areas. There are no shaded areas. Count the number of trees. There are no trees. And we paid millions of dollars for this. Okay, that's another thing we have to look at. Uh, so some schools are taking those and they're modifying them. So they're looking at them, they're using some, they're discarding the others. Other schools that don't have the money are actually implementing the full modules from the state. So what you're looking at is, you know, kids learn in all different ways. You know, some are auditory learners, some are uh, visual learners, some are textual learners. They have to just write it down. So we're not taking into account of that. We're not taking into account <coughs> children with disabilities, learning disabilities. We're, we're not taking into account kids that are advanced learners. This is a race to, it's not even the middle, I don't know where it is, okay? But it's just a failed program. But now you have Kathy, you know, our bill, we do set up the 23 member panel. We tell them exactly what they have to look at. And we took all of that from five months of going out there and listening to parents, teachers, grandparents, everyone that's involved in this. And we didn't cut anybody off like a lot of other hearings did. We let them speak. We had five hour forms on these issues. We took a lot of information. We put it in what's called the Apple Report. That's online. Uh, if you go to Fix NY Schools, there's a petition drive to petition the governor. Now the governor just came out the other day. Now our bill is very concise, but now Kathy Nolan comes out who is the chairwoman for education, mm -hmm. and she put it out a bill on Sunday and is talking about passing it Tuesday. And Ed Ra and I, Assemblyman Ra, we're sitting there reading it over the weekend. The bill does absolutely nothing. It's all legal gobbledygook. Mm -hmm. That right, it does not stop Common Core. It does not stop the the uh, curriculum. It doesn't do anything. Basically, it, they're saying the testing, the testing. It's not just the testing. It's, it's the uh, curriculum you have right. to look at. It's what we're doing, where we're pushing these kids. <laughs> and now the governor comes out, and he's sitting there focused on the testing, the testing. The t I, I, I just don't get it, right? They don't listen. We've been talking about this for five months. They have selective hearing. They don't want to listen to anybody. They just want to push through their agenda. And it doesn't matter if they're hurting these kids or not. And the only thing they're worried about now is they're trying to, both Cuomo, the governor, and Kathy Nolan are trying to put out this bill that it says Common Core, but it doesn't achieve anything to get them past the next election. Well, guess what? We're not gonna sit here and we're not gonna let them do it. So stand by. I think it's supposed to come to the floor on Tuesday. The All Nolan right. bill. The Nolan bill. And it's supposed to come before us in committee it's not going to be pretty. Boy. So I'm looking forward to the debate. I'm looking forward to her standing up there and trying to justify what she's trying to do. And I'm looking forward to her trying to explain the bill. But I would ask everybody out there to go to Fix NY Schools and sign the petition to the governor. In the last four days, we've gotten over 4,000 signatures mm -hmm. to the governor's office. So uh, we need your help. We need you to call your representative. We need you to call your assemblyman and tell them to sign on to Assembly Bill A8844. And put the pressure on and call your senator and tell him you expect him to sign on to S6604. And it's all online. You can see it there. So uh, just go to fixnyschools.com and you'll be able to look at it all. It's right there in front of you. 
Very good. Well, you mentioned at the top of the program when the silly season, the season of March and uh, budget season. Do you, do you see, foresee any major uh, budget battles aside from Common Core and education <laughs> funding? I mean, those are the big ones. Yeah, well, the governor forgot to mention us in the state of the state. It's like Long Island didn't exist, but I'm sure he's going to find us when the bill comes. <laughs> so, I mean, there are so many problems. I'm, if you look at his health care that he put in, his exchanges, Stony Brook actually refused to take the New York State exchanges because the Medicaid reimbursement is so low. Um, and it looks like he misgaged that. He did the same thing as they did with Obamacare. The whole premise is young people are going to sign up, right. and they're not. So there's probably going to be something in the budget where we're going to pick up the tab again, you know. Well, I, I sometimes refer to this governor as the anti, anti Midas. Everything he touches doesn't turn to gold. And this is going to be a big struggle. He's killed our schools. He, I mean, our schools aren't, he's cut the funding for us again. He's cut all the funding for the libraries. He's cut funding for Sagamore Children's Psychiatric Center. And he, you know, I just can't wrap my mind around what he thinks sometimes because what he's doing is last year when you had children, you had kids that committed crimes and they got jail time. So in order for a kid to get jail time for a crime he committed, it's usually a really bad crime. And they sent them up, you know, they'd be in facilities upstate. He said, well, that was inhumane. We need to bring them closer to home so their parents can be involved in their rehabilitation. Yet we have kids with emotional problems, kids with psychological problems, right, where their parents are very involved. They haven't committed crimes. They haven't done anything, you know, but they have some problems. And we have this great facility. And I know one or two assemblymen who actually have loved ones whose lives were saved in this facility. And he wants to close it down and ship these kids to the Bronx. Is a cost-saving measure? No, you, you're reason? stepping over a dollar to pick up a dime. A lot of these kids that come in here are given to the facility or, or directed from the courts, the family court. So it's a family court type thing. And they have the children coming in to seek help. And, I mean, I went there the other day, and some of this stuff is heartbreaking. I could see little girls on a stage or, or young women on a stage, and you could see how they were starting to come out of their shell. But they had a lot of, of problems with uh, self-esteem and everything. You could still see traces of it. But to watch them up on the stage and watch them do their performance and how this place is helping them. You know, look, teen suicide is a big problem right now. And, and it's happening all over the place. And uh, this facility, we can't afford to lose this. You can't send these kids to the Bronx. Thankfully, the governor half listened again, okay? And what he actually did is he gave us back half the beds. So we're going to be fighting for the other half of the beds. So, I mean, you look at it, there are so many issues facing us. LIPA is another one. Since his LIPA bill went into place, we've seen four increases. Now we saw another increase. You've seen an increase in the debt. That's another thing we're going to have to look at in the budget. Uh -huh. I, there's a lot of stuff going on in the state, okay? But... He's not making it easy. And the last thing, I, I know you, we're, we're going to be closing up here. The last thing we're about to do now is uh, I had the commissioner for the Department of Criminal Justice, and we were talking about, I was talking to him in a hearing about the heroin epidemic. Right. And right. he actually looked at me and goes, yeah, it's becoming a problem. I go, it's becoming a problem. Where have you been? <laughs> it's really so we're actually yeah. going to try to push that in the forefront, too, and see what we can do. Because mm -hmm. once we put the ice stop in place, we, we stopped one problem but created another yeah. problem. A lot of stuff. A lot of stuff to cover. A lot to, a lot to get done. We wish you uh, the best. I oh, am. Yeah. Keep fighting the good fight. A couple more gray hairs. What's the <laughs> difference? <laughs> Assemblyman Al Graff, thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining us on this edition of Assembly Calendar. We'll see you soon. I'm Ted Flynn.